and welcome to this quick little conditioning practice. I hope it doesn't take more than 20 minutes, but we'll get right into it. This will help to bolster your bent arm strength for your float through and your float back and your frog jump and all the things. So let's we'll start in a wrist warm up. In a tabletop position, instead of having, you can play around with it, the um, angle of your fingertips. Maybe if your fingertips are a little bit more off to the side, you can have, it can feel a little bit more stable. You can see what it feels like with the pointer finger facing forwards and just leaning, finding your max extension and then releasing. And then leaning, finding that max extension, then releasing. Keep going with your breath. And not going to the point of pain, but going to the point of sensation. I'm basically just following the drills um, little PDF that I sent out. And yeah, super fun. This extension thing that's going on is gonna be really important because the more you lean in your float back um, and, your, and your frog jump, the more control you'll have. Okay. So maybe three more. Maybe you hover the knees for these last three. Three. We'll do two more. Knees hovering, nice and strong, cobra hood in the shoulder girdle. And lower down. Fingers in or on the backs of the palms, making sure that all of your fingertips are staying on the ground. The fingertips like to float up. So you're gonna lower the chest towards the ground, press up, ball the hands into a fist, then come onto the tops of the knuckles. So lower, open, chest lowers, push back up, hand into fist, push onto tops of fist. Lower hands, extend fingertips, lower belly. Push up, fingers into fist and onto the tops of the fist. Lower, we'll do three more. One, kind of lubricating the joint. Two, three. Okay, again with the wrist leans, kind of going off the script of what is written, but these wrist leans are super important. Again, hovering the knees, doing maybe five. That's two, three, four, and five. Fingertips back facing towards you, um, backs of hands onto the ground. And just lean back, same thing, but leaning back, finding your edge, and then releasing. Just maybe five. And last one. Okay, shaking it out. We'll go to scapula push-ups. Um, we'll start with the knees and we'll work our way up to the toes. Start in tabletop. Arms are nice and straight. Putting most of your body weight into your thumb and your first finger. Notice how the arms are straight, allowing the chest to drop between the arms. Push the ground away, one. Scapula push up, two. Drop and push, core is engaged. Three. Push the hands into the mat, back of the heart towards the ceiling. Four. Push. Five. Okay, pause in your cobra hood. This um, scapular protraction, scapular depression, strong upper back. Drop the knees back to like a half push up position. Big toes curled under and go again. One. Push up. Two. And up. Three. Up. Four, up, five, up to stay. Option to stay here, maybe you go into your push up. One, two, three, four, five. We're doing ten, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, push up, stay in your plank. 
for 10, 9, 8, 7, lean forward, 6, lean forward, 5, 4, 3, 2, lower onto the knees. Shake out the rest of it. We'll do that little scapula push-up container one more time with the hold and we'll do the same thing again. The exact same burning shoulders little flow. <laughs> I really feel it. Okay, giving yourself a minute to calm the heart rate. Preparing yourself to put in max effort. All right. Good boy. Come into tabletop. We'll do five. One. And two. And three. And four. And five. And hold in that cobra hood. Strong hands, strong arms, strong scapula. Step the knees back into your half push-up. And we go again, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and hold at the top. Maybe you make your way into your tall plank. One, and two, and three, and shoulders away from the ears, and five, and wait, mostly seven in the thumb and first finger, eight, nine, ten. Hold and lean. Four, three, two, one. Lean a little bit further forward. Four, three, two, one. Forward. Four, three, two, one. Drop to the knees forward. Four, three, two, forward. Last one. Three. Two, let it go. Again, those leans, super important. Returning to your seiza. Rolling up the wrists, catching your breath. Seeing how fast you can get your heart rate to return to normal. Shoulders are a little bit on fire. <laughs> okay, so our next little container is a dolphin push-up from knees to block push-ups. This little container is taken straight out of the Flight of the Warrior series from Camel Queen. He is amazing. Um, and this is just an amazing little container. So we'll do two things in our dolphin that I didn't write down. No, just one. Plant the forearms, two, for sure two. Plant the forearms, step back into your forearm plank and hold. Hollow out the back, the upper back. <laughs> Keeping the neck neutral. Then we just begin to walk the feet forward into your dolphin. Setting the hips high, feet are maybe nice and wide. This makes it a bit more accessible. And then walk the toes back. Drop the hips, walk the toes up, two in your dolphin, walk the toes back, three, walk the toes up, walk the toes back, four, last, not last one, second last one, walk the toes back, and five, walk the toes up to stay. Whew, bent knees helps if your hammies are tight. And from here, we're just gonna do scapula push-up. So allowing the head to drop down close to the mat, maybe not touching, but closer, and then push the head away. One, two, push, three, push, four, push, five, push, six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, walk the feet back, forearm plank hold, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, lower. Giving yourself a little pause, 
catch the breath. Shoulders on fire. Our aim, hopefully, is this little space in between your shoulder blades, your upper back, around your T-spine. That's kind of what we want to have feeling fiery. Just taking maybe one more breath here. And then we do the same thing again. Okay. Planting the hands. Hook shoulder with distance apart, palms down. Set the feet back to your forearm plank. Shoulders away from the ears. And then adding one thing. Now we're going to descend into a hovering cobra type thing. So dropping the hips, pulling the chest through, keeping the thighs lifted. And then slowly tuck the chin, roll through the spine, step the feet up, find your dolphin. Okay, we'll work through it again. Step the feet back, find your neutral plank, pelvis descends, pull the chest through the arms to a hovering up dog kind of situation. Tuck the chin, push the hands into the ground, find that cobra hood, then begin to walk the feet up. Two, walk the feet back, lower down, pause in your neutral spine, lower the pelvis, snake the way through, up dog, bent elbows, tuck the chin, push the hips high, as the hips go high, walk the feet back. Three, hold here. We begin those scapula push-ups, eight of them. Dipping down, pushing ground away. Seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one. Take it back, forearm plank. Hold, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, pelvis drops, up dog, 4, 3, 2, lower down, push back, stays off. Okay, catching your breath, shoulders are maybe on fire, great way to alleviate this is fingertips to shoulder heads, taking a few little circles one way, Whew. a few circles the other way, maybe cross the arms, kind of alleviate any, or move around, any lactic acid buildup in the shoulders. Okay, what's next? I think, all right. So the next little container, we're kind of going off script, um, will be a block push-up to a plank lean hold. Okay. So from the block push-ups, we'll start with knees. Put the hands underneath the shoulders. Walk the knees back to your half push-up. <clears throat> and then lower down to your half push-up position. Hold. And then press, not until the arms are straight, but until they're at three quarter. And then one quarter. This is the Kemba Quinn special. Three quarter, one quarter, all the way up. Half, three quarter, one quarter, three quarter. Half and up. That's two. We'll go for five. Half. Three quarter. One quarter. Three quarter. Half. Up. Three. Half. Three quarter. One quarter. Three quarter. Half. Up. Four. Last one. Half. Three quarter. One quarter three quarter, half, up. Give yourself a moment. Maybe a quick child's pose, but keep the hands based and strong. Come forward into your plank, but shift so the toes are a little bit closer than you would normally have them. Pop up, find your cobra hood and lean. Four, three, two, one. Lean a little bit further. Four, three, two, when nothing changes, just come up onto the tops of the feet. Lean a little bit more. 
four, three, two. The last one, four, three, two. Cesar. <sighs> Catching your breath, rolling up the shoulders however you need, taking any movements. After this one, we'll do a little core. And then after the core, we'll practice, um, or, or I'll show you, we'll do a few rounds of practicing the, the float back and the, and the frog jump. Or the, the sit through, I guess, is what it, would, what it would be. Okay, so for this last round of chaturanga blocks, you can either stay on your knees, like I will be, or you can come up onto your toes. We'll do five again. Base the hands, nice and strong, fingertips gripping into the mat. Step back into either your plank or your half push-up position. We're gonna go half, three quarter, one quarter, three quarter, half, up. That's one, half, three quarter, one quarter, three quarter, half, up. Half, three quarter, one quarter, three quarter, half, three, Whew. two more, half, three quarter, one quarter, three quarter, half, up, okay, last one, half, three quarter, one quarter, three quarter, half, up, to stay, strong arms, step back to plank, Feet a little bit closer than you would normally, and lean. Four, three, two, one, lean. Four, three, two, one, tops of feet, lean. Four, three, two, one, lean. Four, three, two, stays off. All right, coming all the way to seated. If you have blocks, blocks are really handy for this. You absolutely do not need them, and I will not be using them just to show you that you don't need them. And if you do want them, they'll just be under your hands at all points. It'll make sense. Okay, so the point of this is to connect you to your deep core. So the first one will be an L-sit pike up. Second one will be an L-sit hold. And I might add another one, but we will, I might add it, we'll see. So we're gonna walk the fingertips forward. The further forward they go, the harder it's gonna be. So start somewhere small maybe. Fingertips is a little bit easier, palms is a little bit harder. Press the hands into the ground, hollow out the upper back, then lift the feet, hold, 10, lower, nine, lower, eight, lower, seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, down, two, down, one, down, hold. Walk the hands back so they're aligned with the hips. L sit, hold. Press the hands into the ground, hover the hips, and then you can either lift both feet or no feet or one foot. Push, shift the hips back. Maybe the toes lift for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Lower down, keep the engagement with the legs. We're adding on the thing I was like, maybe we won't add on. Lean back until your sit bones catch you. Hollow out the front line of your body. We're coming in and out of this one. Arms reach up overhead, biceps long with the ears, heels planting down, don't let them lift. And lower. Seven, feel the shakes. Lower, try to stack hard on top of pelvis. Six, five, and four. Lower, three, and two, 
and one lower. Give yourself a moment, fold forward, maybe rock side to side. Okay, we do it again. Fingertips walk forward, toes point. The further back your hands are. Oh, another thing I don't want to see is leaning back. I mean, like if you have to, this is fine, but you really want to find that piking action with your upper body and your legs. Fingertips walk forward. And then lift 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, hold, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower. Hands walk back, bring the hips, and as you try to figure this out, how am I going to get my feet and my hips off the ground, just remember to shoot the hips back um, I'll show you. Plant the hands, push up, shimmy the heels back, lift. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower down. Okay, feet sit together, toes can point. Shift the weight back onto the sits bones, arms to overhead. Eight, seven, six, it out. One more round. I have no concept of time right now. <laughs> okay. Fingertips walk forward, toes point. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, hold. 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower. Last bell sit. Make it spicy. Hands walk back. Frame the hips. Push the hands into the ground to press the shoulder blades. Shimmy the heels back. Maybe the feet lift. They don't have to for ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two lower. Couldn't quite do that last one. Zip the feet together, lean back. Also, the more you lean back, the harder it will be. Just keep that in mind. Another thing, you don't want your core to cone, you want it flat. Draw the navel in, an even compression across the belly. Lean back, and eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one, and release. Okay. So what's the point of all this? The point is to work the frog jump, the sit through, the float through, and the float back. I'm going to try my best to walk you through that. So we'll start with the frog jump forward. We all start in down dog. Taking your time to get there, pedaling up the feet. We'll kind of flow this in a way. So upward the heels, tops of the ankles, step forward. Tuck the tailbone, navel to spine, roll your way into a high plank, hold in your high plank, lean forward. Hold, lean more forward, hold. Maybe you push the boundaries, lean a little bit farther forward. And then hips descend, make your way to a floating up dog. Chest pulls through the arms, uh, chin lifts. Tuck the chin, push the hands into the ground. Slowly, like a wave, roll back down and facing dog. Feet zip together. Float the right foot an inch off the ground, bend the knee. Draw the knee forward, try to tap knee to nose. 
lift the left heel, roll forward. Try to tap knee to tricep. Now try to extend the leg so your foot's out of hover. Hold for five, four, three, two. Take it back down dog. Left foot hovers. Chamber the heel towards the glute. Lift up on the right heel, roll forward. Left knee, left tricep. Extend the leg, hover the foot for five, four, three, two. Take it back down dog. Come up high onto the toes, tiptoe forward, keep the arms straight. We're landing in that malasana position, but keep your arms straight. Lean forward. Notice with every tiptoe, you can, uh, as if you're trying to pike up into handstand, you're pressing the ground away with the hands. Maybe when you're in this, you're not like in a loosey-goosey forward fold. You're strong, you're leaning. Maybe you float the right toes, tap the arm, lower, left toes float, tap the arm, lower, hips lower. <sighs> Wiggle up the wrists. Okay. Fingertips plant on the ground. Inhale to find a half lift. Heel toe the feet together, rocking back and forth on the feet forward fold. Deep bend in the knees, root to rise. Arms reach out and up. Stretching the arms apart. Find arrow mudra, yogi pistol, every finger interlaces except for the first finger. Deep bend in the knees, find your back bend. Release the grip, swan out over the legs, under control. Take your time to get there, don't tap into the spine. Inhale to find half lift. Exhale to plant the hands, come up high onto the toes, take the hips towards the heels. Fingertips are maybe a forearm's distance away from the toes. Lean forward, find your max lean. When you find your max lean, bend your elbows. Maybe the toes can find a little bit of weightlessness off the ground. And if not, then you're still working that lean and bend, even if the toes don't lift, it doesn't matter. So lean, bend, maybe step back chaturanga. Pull the chest through the arms. Upward facing dog, tuck the chin, roll back, downward facing dog, and that's the flow. We'll run through it one more time. We'll start with a rolling wave. Lift the heels. Pelvis tucks under, navel to spine, roll through vertebra by vertebra. Find your high plank, hold and lean. Find your max extension in the wrists. Lower the pelvis towards the ground. Pull the chest through the arms, upward facing dog. Tuck the chin, push the hands into the ground, roll back, down dog, feet, to go, sorry, feet come together. Left foot this time we'll start with lifts, bend the knee and draw the knee forward. Upper the right heel and roll, knee to tricep. Extend the left toes out of hover, five, four, three, two, take it back, down dog. Right foot hovers, chamber the heel, draw the knee forward. Uproot the heel, roll into your plank. Knee to tricep, extend. Five, four, three, two, take it back. Put palm onto the toes, tiptoe into a kind of hip width distance apart kind of fold. Stay on the tippy toes first. As you lean forward, extend over the wrists. Try to feel what it, or notice what it feels like having the hips Step onto the shoulders. Lower down on the heels for a moment. Keep that lean forward in the hands. Left toes tap the wrist. Hold. Lower. Right toes tap the wrist. Hold. Lower. Left toes. Hold. Lower. Right toes. Hold. Lower. Malasana. Hips sink down. Rolling up the wrist a little bit. Okay, fingertips find the ground, find your halfway lift. Heel toe the feet together, forward fold. Deep bend in the knee, root to rise. Arms reach up and up. Find yogi pistol, athletic bend in the knees. Find your back bend. Separate the hands, swan dive over the legs, under control. Okay, inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, plant the hands, forearms distance, come up high onto the toes, hips towards the heels. Okay, we do that again. This time, we'll lean, bend elbows, land twice. And on the second one, we'll shoot back to Chaturanga. So one to practice, one to shoot back. Lean, bend elbows, see what that feels like. The lean's important. Release. This time, try to get a little bit of air time as you float back. Just try. If there's no air time, step back, but the intent is there and that's what counts. Plant the hands, lean forward, bend the elbows, maybe and float back. Pull the chest through the arms, lower the knees, shift the hips back. Child's pose. All right, excellent work. That is, I think, a really good few sets of exercises to help build your strength in the uh, float back and the frog jump. I would demo a frog jump, what it's supposed to look like, um, but can't do it. So I think the best thing when you're learning is to do it one at a time. The right foot or right knee taps the tricep, you extend the foot, lower, left foot follows. If you want to feel a little bit spicy, hips towards the heels look forward, think light, and as you jump forward, just try to picture um, slowing yourself down a little bit, like feeling that drag. So when you're here, even if it's subtle, when you get here, just try to slow yourself down, even in a micro movement. It's small, it's subtle, but you're working hard. And if you have your inversion, you can slowly fold down. Oh, there's no chance I think I can do this, but we'll give it a go. Okay, something like that. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed. It's not verbatim what I have written on the PDF, but I think that that's a really fun, spicy little however long this was flow. I hope it was in 40 minutes. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun.